Hey everybody, Pastor Jason here with you. We're going to do something a little different for these next two weeks worth of devotions. We are reaching back into 2015 when our pastor, Jeremiah Hosford, preached a powerful word. I mean a powerful word on the kingdom of God. We are ushering in something incredible in this season. We are advancing the kingdom in a particular way. And I think it, it behooves us to make sure that we have a grasp on what that kingdom is and what it means to us. And so I would love for you to take a few minutes, just sit back and listen to our lead pastor, Jeremiah Hosford, as he brings a word about the kingdom of God. Be blessed. Uh, once you have turned to Matthew chapter 28, look at, look at the person beside you and tell them you ain't here by accident. Amen. You ain't here on accident. I, I, I got a feeling tonight that the Lord's going to reveal why some folk getting their lunch money taken. Amen. Why are you getting your lunch money taken? Amen. Matthew 28, verse 18. A very familiar passage of scripture. And Jesus came and spoke to them saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Now, I don't have time to really go through that right there. But if you'll, if you'll study that out, you'll find out why he's making a distinction between heaven and earth. And why he's saying it right then and he didn't say it before then. Glory be to God. Heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Father, tonight in the name of Jesus, I stand before you, God, to preach and teach your word. Father, I know this is by no coincidence that we are here in your presence tonight. Nor is it a coincidence, God, that this word is being taught tonight. So, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I thank you and I ask you to anoint me to preach and teach your word. Bless the reading and the preaching of your word. Anoint your people to hear, receive, and understand it. Look upon my availability, God, not upon my ability tonight. For I give myself as a vessel of honor to you tonight, God. You just flow through it, Lord. Speak through it and do what you want to, want to through it, God. And I pray, Father, tonight, in the name of Jesus, I invoke the authority that has been given to me in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth over this house now. And I decree and declare that every hindrance has got to go. I decree and declare every demon's got to come out now in Jesus' name. I decree and declare, chains got to break now. Yokes of bondage be destroyed now. I decree and declare, anything opposing the leadership of this house, I render you powerless now. I call you down now in the name of Jesus. Right now. Hallelujah. Anything keeping people sick, I rebuke you now by the authority that is given to me in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And I command you, go back to the pit where you belong. And I thank you for that right now, God. In the name of Jesus and the church said, amen. Look at two or three people. And I, I do this on purpose. I don't just do this just to do it, guys. I do this so because somebody's going to remember what you say every once in a while. Just tell them Jesus has given you the authority. Come on. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Part two tonight is uh, just simply titled Spiritual Authority. Spiritual Authority. 
Now, I want to talk about this. We're going to do a little preaching. We're going to do some teaching tonight, too, though, because uh, there's something that rises up in me when I see that people are, are living below what God has intended for them. Now, I don't know if any of us are quite at the place that God wants us to be. But some of us don't even know we need to be up there. <laughs> and so I want to, I want to just, just through the anointing tonight, just try to bring some things and some revelation to your mind tonight on spiritual authority. That God can help us in some ways. Now, before we get into it, I, I, let me just try to build a foundation that we can kind of stand on for a minute tonight. Uh, the Greek word for authority here is exousia. Now, it means delegated influence. I want you to get that for a minute. It means delegated influence. It means jurisdiction. It means power. It means strength. It means majesty and control. Amen. Amen. That's what this Greek word means right here. So when Jesus said all authority, what he's saying, he said, I have been given all jurisdiction in heaven and on earth. Matter of fact, the Bible says that in him, that it, it pleased the father that in him, the fullness of God should dwell. So Jesus is saying, listen, I've got all jurisdiction, all strength, all power, all, all uh, uh, delegated influence in heaven and on earth. Now, then he gives us this, uh, this command. He says, now go. Now go. Hallelujah. In other words, he's saying, listen, I'm going to send you what you need. To make it happen. I'm going to send you with what you need to make it happen. So let's talk about it just for a minute. I want to go through some scriptures before we can build this thing up to where we need to be. I hope you got your Bibles. Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. Let's turn there and we're going to read a couple passages of scripture here. Matthew chapter 7 verse 28. And so it was when Jesus had ended these sayings that the people were astonished at his teaching for he taught them as one having authority. And it even makes a distinction here, not as the scribes. Glory be to God. In other words, spiritual authority is more than just knowledge of the word. Now, there's some people with, that have a lot of knowledge of the word, but they have no spiritual authority. There's some people that can, that can write commentaries, but can't cast a devil out. There, there are people that, that uh, are very eloquent in their words. But, but can't, can't come into a place and the atmosphere shift. Now, I'm saying this and I'm, I'm bringing, I'm, we're building something here. Because it, the Bible made a very uh, distinction. Yes, Jesus could teach, but it said Jesus had authority. In other words, that he wasn't just the knowledge of the scripture. It was the revelation of the scripture that caused something to be different. Glory be to God. So I want, I want us to get this. It's a revelation of the word, not just knowledge of the word. I know folks that can quote scriptures, but can't live them. Amen, Amen pastor. Amen. I know folks that done been around the church for a long time, but got hateful, mean, bitter spirits in them. Got a knowledge of the word, but don't have no revelation of the word. Don't have no kind of spiritual authority. So there's a difference here. God is saying, I need my children in these last days to begin to walk in a spiritual authority that can come in and serve notice on the powers of hell and advance the kingdom of God. Give him praise for that right now. It's a revelation of the word. It's the truth that you know 
that'll make you free. Let's go on to another passage of scripture. Matthew chapter eight, just building something here. Matthew chapter eight, verse five. Now, when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home, paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. And the centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word and my servant will be healed. Now we, there's, there's some, there's some, some, uh, there's a lot of stuff here, but we're going to pull something out of here tonight. That's going to help us. Verse nine, for I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go and he goes and another one come and he comes in my, and to my servant do this. And he does it. And when Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those, he says, surely I say to you, I've not found such great faith, not even in Israel. Verse 13. And Jesus said to the centurion, go your way. And as you have believed, Believe, so let it be done for you. Go your way, and as you have believed, let it be done for you. The centurion had grabbed something here that most church folk didn't know. And basically what it was, in other words, he, he knew enough about authority to know that Jesus didn't have to be present for it to work. Oh, my goodness. That Jesus did not have to be in his house for authority to work. He said, I, I don't have to show up on the battlefield all the time. I can tell my soldier, you do this and they go do it. And I can tell them come and they come and I can tell them go fight and they go fight. He said, I know enough about authority to know that distance is not going to stop it. Ah, hallelujah. He said, I know enough about it to know Jesus that you don't really have to be present in bodily form for it to work. Really, all you got to do is just say the command. In other words, he was saying there's something in your word that causes things to happen when you speak it. There's spiritual authority behind you enough, Jesus, that all you have to do is say something and it can be 10 miles away and it happens. Glory be to God. This is what he, th this is something I want us to get tonight because there's times where we can't, you, you might not can get to a person. You might get a phone call and they're four states away. Hey, I need you to pray. I want you to know tonight that if you'll walk in spiritual authority, that you can begin to use that authority in Christ and begin to rebuke whatever's there and watch the power of God show up and heal, deliver, make free, restore, whatever it is. Glory be to God. Now let's go to Mark chapter three. Mark chapter three. Now for some of you, this, what I'm saying tonight is a little foreign because you were raised in places that was constantly telling you what isn't yours instead of telling you what is yours. Now that's not a shot against anybody. That's not trying to put anybody down, but I'm just saying, man, I would hate to have to pick through the Bible to find out what ain't mine. I mean, I don't know if I could preach it then. I'm just being honest. If I had to pick through the Bible and constantly find out what is not for me, and I mean, might as well tear pages out of it and just form it to what I need it to be. So I'm talking about spiritual authority tonight. Mark chapter three, verse 14. Watch this. Jesus appointed 12 that they might be with him and that he might send them out to preach and to have power. That word there is not dunamis. That word there is exousia, that they might have authority. The Greek word for power is dunamis. It's where we get our word dynamite. That's not the word there. The word there is exousia, which means authority. That they may have authority to heal sicknesses and to cast out demons. Amen. Come on. Glory be to God. So let, let, let's, let's go on. Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4, verse 31. Then he went down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and he was teaching them on the Sabbath. 
And they were astonished at his teaching for his word was with authority. Let me just stop there. That people, people sometimes can't put their finger on it and they can't really describe it with words, but they'll say he teaches or he preaches different than other people. And they'll try to give the credit to a gift, but they don't realize it's authority. It's authority. That's the difference. Let's go on. Now in the synagogue, there was a man who had a spirit of an unclean demon and he cried out with a loud voice saying, let us alone. What have we to do with you, Jesus, Jesus of Nazareth? Did you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him saying, be quiet, come out of him. And when the demon had thrown him in their midst, it came out of him and did not hurt him. Then they were all amazed and spoke among themselves saying, what a word this is. My God, what a word this is for with authority and power, he commands the unclean spirits and they come out. He commands them. Jesus enters the synagogue. Watch this. And because of his authority, the man with the demon couldn't sit there without crying out. Now, teacher after teacher could stand up and he could sit there. But when somebody with spiritual authority came in, he couldn't sit there without crying out. This is the difference I'm trying to speak to you right now. It's not about a gift. It's not about a talent. It's not about who can spit, scream, dance. It ain't nothing about, it's about who has the spiritual authority to cause the powers of hell to back down in the kingdom of God to go forth. This is what God is calling for you. Let's go to Luke chapter 9. I just want to point something real quick out there to you. Luke chapter 9, verse 1. Again, he's calling them, he's calling his disciples together. He called 12 disciples together. He gave them the power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. Over all demons and to cure diseases. He sent them, verse 2, to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. We see a correlation there I don't want you to miss. To preach the kingdom of God, not your denomination. Ah, hallelujah to the Lamb. Not what you think you want to preach, but to preach the kingdom of God. When the kingdom's preached, the power and the authority of the kingdom's in the house. Amen. Let's go one more place. John chapter five. Not going to belabor the point, but I'm just trying to set it up for you. John chapter five, verse 26 Jesus says, for as the father has life in himself, so he has granted the son to have life in himself and has given him, Jesus has given his son authority to execute judgment, to execute judgment. I don't, I'm not, I've taught on this before. I'm not going to go into heaven, but you need to understand that heaven has a courtroom. Heaven has a courtroom. And there, there is authority, watch this, that can cause judgments to come forth. That's right. That's right. I shouldn't open that can of worms, amen, because I don't have time to get there, but maybe I'll, I'll teach on that another night. But there are times, beloved, where you can come before the judge and you can say, God, enough is enough. Judge this matter. Now, it ain't in arrogance, it ain't in pridefulness, and I promise you, it will be after long suffering. (laughs) It'll be after long suffering. It'll be after some patience. But you can come before the judge and say, judge this matter. So, beloved, listen, I I brought you to all, all through all this scripture right here to bring you right back to Matthew chapter 28 
So when Jesus says, all authority in heaven and earth has been given unto me, you go therefore. Now you know what he's talking about. Now you know what he's talking about. Now you know what has been purchased through the cross and the resurrection. Now you know what has been given unto you. Now you realize some of it is starting to click in you. I don't have to put up with this. I don't have to keep being a dope head. I don't have to continue to be strung out. I don't have to continue to be addicted to pornography. I don't have to continue to be mean and bitter and a hateful old person. I don't have to be that. I don't have to keep cheating on my spouse. I don't have to keep being doing it. No, no, no. I don't have to. I have been given authority. Jesus said all authority in heaven and earth has been given unto me. You go therefore. I have been given authority in Christ though. It's in Christ. See, we can't. It ain't just yours. It's in Christ, not around Christ, in Christ. When you're in Christ, that's when you can walk in spiritual authority. When you hang out around Christ, well, that's a different story. So let's go somewhere tonight. Hallelujah. In other words, watch this. Jesus is saying, I would not send you out to accomplish this task without this authority. Because hell's going to do whatever it can to try to stop you, derail you, to try to get you to, to, to get you distracted. It's going to do whatever it can to try to destroy you. And if you don't have spiritual authority, you're giving in to what it wants. Now, the question is, is this, if Jesus has given us authority, then why are we not all walking in it? Hey, everybody, Pastor Jason back here with you. What a powerful word we received from our lead pastor, Jeremiah Haas, for today. I hope that you are blessed and I hope that you will carry this word and not just be a hearer of this word, but be a doer of this word as well. I pray a blessing over you, over your house, over everything that pertains to you today. I pray that the Lord would be with you that the Lord would keep you, that he would cause his face to shine upon you, that the Lord would be gracious to you and that he would give you his peace. Now go out and make this the best day ever. God bless you. We'll see you back. Thank you for tuning in to the Abundant Life devotional series. These devotions are available across many platforms, including our Abundant Life Revival Network YouTube channel. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat at WeAreALRC for this and other great content. If you are in the South Atlanta area or the North Macon and Forsyth areas, we would love for you to come visit one of our campuses. You can find all the information you need at AbundantLifeChurch.com. My name is Jennifer, I am Overflow, and I am Abundant Life Church.